Hello, welcome once again to Whispers in the Theater. I'm your host, the Whispering Gardener Shoe, here to continue our exciting tale. The Other Side of Myth, Chapter 6, The Diamond and the Mini. Kiara awoke to an unfamiliar ceiling. Planks of wood sat side by side, reminding her of houses she had only seen in movies. Was rustic the word for something like this? The whole room was very much the same. Wooden floors, wooden walls, round wooden tables sitting on the other side. They all glistened with some form of lacquer and all told her she was out of place. As she laid in a big soft bed, she thought over how she got here. Dortes must have done it, but she didn't know how to feel about that. Sure, she told him she couldn't go home, but she didn't know if she asked for this. Where was she exactly, and how did she get home from here? Her parents filled her mind, and she wondered what nightmares she left behind. She breathed deep, and a sweet scent of flowers filled her nose. They drew her eyes to the window, daylight shining. Pink flowers sat on the sill, and beneath them on an end table, her mobile sat. It gleamed in its charging mode, drinking in the sunlight. How long has she been out for his battery to have died? She reached and her body objected, rebelling against her with waves of pain. She shrieked as her hand dropped, and her door swung open as a woman came in. Her strawberry blonde hair fell like a curtain as she adjusted Kiara's position and reached into the side table. Where am I? Kiara's voice came dry. If her mobile died, how long has she been without water? I guess you don't remember. The woman hurried to the round table, where Vile sat. We found you outside of Copperstone. You were injured badly. Were you involved in the skirmish? She asked as she mixed different things. She stirred them rapidly and returned to Kiara's side. Skirmish? Drink this. It's not water, but it will help you get back on your feet. She tilted a vial toward Kiara's lips, and if only because the pain was too much to bear, Kiara let the red liquid pour down her throat. It tasted awful, but its effects were immediate as the pain became a whisper and disappeared altogether. She sat up slowly tossing the covers back. She was bandaged and dressed in what looked like hospital clothes. Bandages? Did that make this woman a nurse? She pressed Kiara's stomach, watching her eyes for a reaction. If you don't feel anything, then you're good to go. She stood and smiled. She had soft green eyes and wore a pure white dress. You help me. Kiara's voice was still hoarse. The woman handed her a glass. She drank deep and tried again. And you said I'm in Copperstone. Where is that? The woman crossed her arms. You're really out of it. And you don't remember the skirmish. How exactly did you end up in that condition? I was in a fight with a woman. I don't think I can explain. But I had to protect my friends, and that's how I got hurt. I thought I was going to die. Kiara checked her chest. She couldn't even feel scars beneath the wraps. You might have, but we had a few supplies left over. Some healing saws and tonics, and a few potions to improve blood flow. It was touch and go, but you recovered rather well. I think you'll be able to stretch your legs today. The woman smiled, 
but Kiara could see deliberation in her eyes. Copperstone is a village in the Comlands, she said. Kiara shook her head. Where exactly is the Comlands? she asked. The woman stepped back. By chance, did you lose your memory? No, my name is Kiara Million, and I'm from Iravel City. Iravel City? The woman crossed her arms. Kiara's eyes widened. It's a pretty big city in central Tagal. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's the place where the monster was attacking people. This wasn't making sense. Raspberry blonde hair and green eyes were a common trait in northern Tagal. But even if the woman was from somewhere else, a Calayan hunt would make the city too hard to ignore. Despite that, there was no denying the bemusement. I'm sorry, but I've never heard of Tagoth. She backed up again, making Kiara cautious. Where were her shoes, just in case she had to run away? Who are you, by the way? She asked, all too aware this woman could be linked to another dweller. My name is Belle Marie, and you've never heard of Tagoth or Irvel. No. Just like you've never heard of Copperstone or the Comlands. Belle Marie couldn't be a simple nurse. The woman's eyes were sharp, imperceptibly following Kiara's hand to her pendant. Kiara raised the hand to send the woman flying back before she could pull the wind. Belle Marie shot forward. She twisted over Kiara's head, dropping behind her, twisting her arm. Kiara let out a shriek, clenching her fist in time to blow the woman away. She hid the wall, collapsing against it. Kiara rose from the bed to stare her down, holding back her fire in hopes of something else. Smoke rose slowly from Belle Marie's body, pulling away like an otherworldly disguise. Where a woman fell, a teenage boy now crouched. His hair was dark and frizzy, his eyes brown and vicious. The olive-skinned boy was clad in black, rising from his crouch with a dagger he didn't have before. Thinking of his speed, she stirred the wind again. It came cold, and her body stiffened as ice crept under the door into the room. It wrapped around her feet and hung from her arms. Another teenager came in with his hand held up. Despite the situation, his appearance shocked her more than his power. Short brown hair, tan skin, brown eyes, and long pointed ears sticking back. You're an elf, she gasped, and dark eyes went wide. Observant, I suppose, but why are you surprised by this? He replied. The other one leaned against the wall. Danton, she doesn't know anything about the skirmish. I don't think she knows anything about us. She says she's from Edervale in Tagal. Do those words mean anything to you? He asked, and the elf looked at the gaping girl, shaking his head. Who are you? He spoke. My name is Kiara Million, she repeated, and he looked to the boy. He nodded, and Danson turned back. I'm Danson, and this is Kago. I think we got off to a bad start here, so how about we go over this all again? Danson lowered his hand, and the ice covering the room began to disappear. When everything was calm and the boy sat, Kiara gave them the history of Tagoth as she knew it, the Democratic of Rhodes, established in a time when there was too much space between nations. Tagoth was the melting pot filled with people from all cardinal directions. Iravel was one of his biggest cities, though fourth from the top. She picked up her mobile, trying to bring up a map. An axe rose instead the device unable to find her location. To be honest, 
Dan San said as her silence dragged. Tagoff doesn't sound like any country I know, and Irivel sounds different than any city I've ever seen, he said. But Kiara's attention remained fixated on the device. What's the deal then? Kago stroked his chin. It feels way too suspicious that she appears after the skirmish. Could she be a magic brigade weapon? He stared at Kiara and the device in her hand. While she was unconscious, he hadn't figured out anything about it, and Dansan had detected no magic. Even watching her, they hadn't determined how the face of the device changed. I get it. Kiara said as though Tess's words came back to her. She was going to mention him next, but things started making sense. I'm not on Nondoctia anymore. I'm on Magdalia. She said this with such awe that the boys went silent. Nondoxia, as in the prosperous world of advancement, Kago scoffed, and yet that answered his confusion about her device. He didn't know much about technology, and yet he knew that would stump any inventor he could find. Yes, I wanted to go to a place where people wouldn't be afraid of me. I have magical powers, so it makes sense that I go to Magdalia. She looked between them. Not exactly our place of expertise, but we're going to meet Liu anyways. Maybe we should take her with us. Kago cocked an eyebrow, and the elf stroked his chin. I'm not against it, he said, but there's something you should know about us first. He rose as if he'd take a moment, but before he could start, he turned toward the window and jumped back. Kago followed suit without a second glance, both escaping as long black tendrils burst through the glass. They swam wildly through the air until one of them touched Kiara. As she struggled violently, it yanked her from the room. A rustic village waited outside, two men standing on the stone road below. It was not tendrils that took hold of her, but long, dark hair. A thin man peered through it, dropping her as he saw his catch. That's not what I wanted. He looked back up, but before his hair could move, Dansan and Kago hopped out from the room. They touched down beside Kiara and crossed their arms. Dansan the diamond, Kago the mini. How about you come with us without too much trouble? Wouldn't want to rough you up so much that they don't recognize your face. Wild hair spoke as the long strands twisted into plates. You say you'll rough us up. But I think that girl could take you alone. Kago grinned. Dance on and me? Well, that's just overkill. You speak fast and free, Minnie. Bless see if you can match the speed of your serpent tongue. The plates came thrashing towards him, and Dance on moved forward. He held up his hands. I'm safe, paraf, he said in a low tone. A wall of ice sprung up from the ground, stopping the hair in his tracks. Kago dashed from behind it, his dagger at the ready. He flicked something glimmering into his mouth. His blade went for wild hair, and his heavyweight partner got in the way. He stopped the boy with a thunderous punch. Kago flew fast past Kiara, crashing through a wall. The heavyweight stepped forward and stared Dansan down. Prehensile hair and super strength magic. I would be stupid to take on a couple of body mages alone. The elf smirked, and wild hair returned it. Then come quietly, he said. Dansan shook his head. Why would I do that? He grinned and had to move fast as the plate swung forward to thump him into the ground. He avoided them easily, skating from left to right. Rather than flee, he went sliding in, bringing his hands together. Ain Saif! Frost covered them as they came apart. Heavyweight lifted his massive arms. 
before he could swing, a suit of armor came flying, crashing into the hoagie man and forcing him to the ground. Wild Hair tried to escape, but moved too slow. Sysos! The elf touched his chest. Something cold and diamond hard raced to fill his veins. His heart pounded as the power in his hair faded. Dansan drew away and turned his back. He could watch the life leave the man, but the heart had already stopped. In the tussle of empowered flesh and living iron, heavyweight smashed the armor's cheek, sending it tumbling back. He ripped stone from the ground and smashed the suit. Chunks exploded away, and he swung a meaty hand next. This time, though, it was split between his fingers. Spikes jutted from the armor's head, holding the hand at the full suit stood. The difference between enhancement magic like yours and transformation magic like mine is that your body is still flesh and bone. Kiara recognized Kago's voice. Suddenly, his arm went as sharp as a blade. Heavyweight tore his hand as he pulled it back and lost the arm as Kago swung. As he howled, the boy stepped forward, pushing his arm through the man's chest. He didn't seem bothered as it came back dripping red. Kiara, however, gulped, fearing what she might have fallen into. Who are you two? she asked. The boy smiled. Didn't you hear? Dansan said. I'm Dansan the Diamond, and he's Kago the Mini, wanted bounties of the mainland empire. Chapter 6 Ends And so too ends another episode of Whispers in the Theater. We're stepping into a new arc here in The Other Side of Myth, and I would be delighted if you were to join me once again.